Arsenal are in a complete meltdown. And in this video, we're going to break down the three big reasons why I think Arsenal are in a world of pain and struggling massively. Can they turn it around? Let me know in the comments down below. And really, it's about what do you think turning it around for Arsenal is? Is that getting back into a Premier League title race? Is it maintaining, trying to go next season? They've still got a young, exciting squad. And this is a side that were challenging only a few weeks ago at the top of the Premier League table. We're in the FA Cup a couple of weeks ago until now. Uh, and I've done actually really well in the Champions League, let's be completely real. So we're going to break down some issues and where Arsenal go in this, uh, in the remainder of this season. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, and if you like the relatively new setup, give it a thumbs up. We're going to get some nice decor here. Some nice decor. Um, let's start off with uh, just an overview of the game. Uh, this is a competition that Arsenal have only won under Mikel Arteta. It's a, it's a competition where if you arrive in the right moment, you can beat the likes of Man City and Liverpool in a one-off game in a semi-final at Wembley on a summer's day. Uh, and this is where Arsenal have had success with Mikel Arteta. Obviously, that happened against Man City similarly as well, um, against Chelsea in the final. So um, Arteta's done it before. Did he disrespect this competition this season? No, because he played a very, very strong side. So he's almost... Um, gambled. He's almost bluffed Jurgen Klopp by playing a stronger side than I think Jurgen Klopp was able to play based on the injuries and the players leaving that Liverpool had. Um, and he still lost the game. So he has treated the competition with a bit of respect, but he's gone out early, very similar to last season where they lost to Man City early in the competition. I think it was basically this time this time last year. And that was huge. It really was because it not only it not only gave Arsenal no understanding of how to beat City in a cup competition in that in that season, but if you treat the Premier League title race as a cup competition in the, in the, in terms of those two games you have to play home and away in the league, then obviously Arsenal struggled last season getting any results against City. It was, it was three straight losses in the league and the FA Cup. So what I mean by that is now Arsenal don't really have an understanding of how to beat Liverpool. Obviously they've got a game in a few weeks in the Premier League as well. So. He's played a full strength side at home and he's lost and he's got no understanding of really how to get past uh, Liverpool in a, in a game. And Liverpool can only get stronger when they play each other. I think the likes of Mohamed Salah will be back, if I'm if I'm not mistaken as well. So uh, it's a massive opportunity in that regard. We're going to get into the three reasons uh, of what are, the, what are the key issues. And some of them are very rudimentary. Some of them are, are very simple points. Football's a very simple sport. You have two goalposts and a, and a bit of a you know a net in between a crossbar, so, as some would say. Uh, you've got to put the ball between the net. Uh, and Arsenal are rubbish at doing that this season. Um, you know their 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 biggest attacking outlet is Bukayo Saka. He's only got what nine or ten goals this comp uh, this season in all competitions. So his attacking outlet is absolutely woeful. Um, the forward line for Arsenal against against Liverpool was so weak. Reece Nelson, Havertz, and Saka. That is a front three that. Uh, that Arsene Wenger had to deal with 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when, you know, after the, after the Emirates came along and he had to have Nicholas Benter up front with Theo Walcott, uh, and Arsenal were never able to challenge Man United, Chelsea, and obviously Man City when when the money came at the start of the, the last decade. So Arsenal, on some level, their attack, their lack of attack is down to the owners, in my opinion. It's down to unambitious owners. And they they spent a lot of money, Arsenal. But we have to talk about the, the, the Kai Havertz signing. It just dawned on me against Liverpool that they have they signed Kai Havertz at 65 million pounds. First, it's a premium. He probably wasn't quite worth that. I don't think it was a good deal. I think they allowed they, they, Chelsea got out of a, a bad deal by getting that kind of money for Kai Havertz. It was it was probably the the smartest and easiest transfer Todd Bowley's done, and that's saying a lot. But it, it struck me against against Liverpool that he's playing as a false nine. He's obviously played in midfield. I think he's played on one of the wings for a little bit as well this season as well. It struck me that the, the owners and Edu and, and Kroenke and all those guys, I think they've tried to be a little bit too smart. Maybe Mick Arta is guilty of this as well. I don't know the ins and outs of Arsenal Football Club, but it strikes me as a jack-of-all-trades, master of none signing. You don't know quite what you need. Maybe you're not quite confident enough of getting the out-and-out -out striker or getting the out-and-out -out Granite Xhaka replacement. So you get someone that can do a vague mixture of those roles. Almost like how Ilkay Gundogan used to play false nine for Guardiola, play left midfield, can play deep. But if you get it wrong, you're really struggling. And Kai Havertz as a false nine, then he's a midfielder, then he's a false nine, then he's a substitute, then he's got confidence, then he hasn't. It, it, it's not going to work. I think the only way Kai Havertz and, and the, the Arsenal attack can, can ever work is that a naturalised striker plays down the middle, a proper Arsenal striker... 
Um, whether that's Gabby Jesus, I know he's got an injury now that could uh, rule him out. For me, it's about the Arsenal attack being replenished by a transfer window. I think Liverpool have to be smart. You know, um, Arsenal have to be smart. Liverpool went out and got Cody Gakpo. Um, that's a decent transfer. Can Arsenal mimic that kind of transfer from a, a, a lower level European league? Get a big striker in there that can can take some of the pressure off uh, Havertz. Put Havertz back in midfield because he's not a false nine. The way that opportunity came for him, I think it was in the first half. Yeah, it was the first half, the ball comes across his body and he takes two or three touches like so slow. So slow. It was like, has this guy, has he woken up? Is he watching the same game I'm watching? I play five, I play five aside under the lights on a Tuesday night, Wednesday night. And you think, I've got more adrenaline. I, I, you hit the ball quick and it's instinctive. Havertz is sat there like that, doughy eyed. And the ball comes across him. He's almost, he's almost rueful to get a chance. He's almost so nervous. And he's like Bambi on ice and he's just dangling all over the place. And I just think, how are you going to achieve anything with that up front? And whether it's Arteta trying to be trying to be too smart for his own good, that's a debate for a different video. Uh, whether it's Edu, whoever's culpable for the Havertz signing, that is a different video really than this. But he's playing now. They played him in, in false nine. It's not worked. He can't keep playing there. He can't keep playing there regardless of Jesus' injuries and Eddie Nketiah as well. Reese Nelson's another one. He's nowhere near good enough. Now, I know that he's an Arsenal... Well, I think he's an Arsenal fan. I think he's relatively a local lad as well. At least been through the academy for a long period of his life. That's great. And sometimes you need that. He needs to be playing early, early, early League Cup games. Early, early FA Cup games as a substitute. And he's he's the five-minute substitute. And if he doesn't like it, he has to go on loan. He shouldn't be starting against Liverpool at the Emirates. Now, I know they've got a few issues, Arsenal, but... The attack for Arsenal is absolutely shambolic at the moment. We're going to move on to the second point. <laughs> it's not as if I'm breaking this video into attack, midfield, defence. But the second point has to be the midfield. Maybe I'm nostalgic. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I've got bad eyesight and I need to go spec savers. How is Emil Smith-Rowe not starting this game? How? Why is Arteta putting trust in players that have, have, have shown more lack of a bigger degree of of a lack of quality than Emil Smith-Rowe has. Why is he not being trusted? I just don't get it. I just do not get it. And it's really frustrating because I like the kid. I think he's really talented. I think he plays football the right way. Maybe maybe an Arsenal fan can let me know in the comments down below. Maybe he's just not good enough. I've heard things about his, his injuries. I've heard things about his height a little bit. That he's kind of grown a little bit and it, it slowed him down. And maybe these comments are fair and I'm missing the point. But he sat there. He, he came on anyway. So why is he not? He's more than good enough to start the game. So if you can believe in Havertz and you can believe in Reese Nelson, how is how is Emil Smith Rowe not, not playing in this game? Because the midfield, Declan Rice looks shattered, in my opinion. Jorginho could play that sitting role. He could play Emil Smith Rowe. I think you have to be smart and say, who are the players that are, that are, uh, are busting the gut to get in this side that have already proven? They've already proven to me as a manager. Emil Smith-Rowe has been very, very good to make Arteta. He was one of the consequential players for Arteta when he first came in, his first job in English football, well, his first job as a senior manager in English football, in any level of football, from the biggest clubs in Europe. And Emil Smith-Rowe was really good for Mick Arteta. He was really, really good. And I know he's had injuries. I know he's been a bit of been a bit unlucky, been linked to loan moves. I get that a million percent. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he's De Bruyne coming back from injury, but if Reese Nelson can start a game, surely Emil Smith Road can. You can rest Declan Rice. You have to pick your battle sometimes, and that's just mine as a, as a as a as an opinionated football fan sat here. That clearly Declan Rice is shattered. Clearly Jorginho can play in the deeper role. Clearly you're going to have a lot of the ball because Liverpool have got a mixture of injuries and and squad rotation. Why, why is Emil Smith-Rowe not playing this game? But anyway, Arsenal's midfield was really lacking in power, uh, lacking in creativity. I mean, if Odegaard is having a bad game, again, Smith-Rowe can do very similar things to Odegaard. I really... I, they're very similar players, and I actually don't think the standard is that different either, and you can shoot me for that one. I don't think their standard on their day is that much different. I really don't. So that's that's the, the, the second point. The third point is a vague, abstract idea, and this is that... Mick Arteta has to get rid of the emotional quality of Arsenal Football Club. They come out in the press and criticise uh, high challenges. They come out um, and, and release kits midway through the season. They come out, I'm not talking about the one yesterday, obviously that's for a serious cause, but the kind of the yellow and the black kits, and it's a bit fashion-y, it's a bit PR. Um, uh, there was a moment where Ramsdale made a save near post. It was a great save. It was a great save. I'm not sitting there saying that he overreacted to a... 
a bad save or anything like that. It was a great save. But you should have seen his face. He was gassed. It was 71 minutes. It was nil-nil. They weren't 8 nil up. They weren't taking the piss out of Liverpool. They weren't rubbing it in Liverpool's uh, face or anything like that. They were, it was nil-nil. So that easily they could have still lost the game. Easily. And they did, obviously. And he makes a save. And you think... And he, he's going around high-fiving people. And it, it, it was honestly like, look, lads, here we go. That was a save to get me back in the side. That was a save to get me back in the side. It's so egotistical. I really do think it is. I've, I, honestly, and it was a great save. And there'll be comments now saying that he should be starting. Fair enough, if you think that. And maybe he's warranted a start because he, he, he made some good saves. He did. He made some really, really good saves. One from Trent over the, uh, over, uh, the top as well, I think it was, uh, in the second half. Um but but that that element of I've made a great save. I'm gonna go round now and give everyone a high five as the corners, you know, just about just before the corner, you know, top level keepers. David Seaman would have been just like Jens Lehmann would have saved it and shouted at a centre back for a shot even being pulled off. But but if the Arsenal number one or the Arsenal former former number one is kind of making these big grandiose celebrations for a save when the game isn't even finished and it's nil-nil against Liverpool, a side that are mean and got confidence. Do you think Alisson was making those kind of saves, uh, those kind of celebrations? I'm not trying to pick holes in the celebration. I know keepers make celebrations when they make a big save. I'm not saying I'm not saying Aaron Rams. I'm not trying to overly criticise Aaron Rams there. What I'm trying to say is there is an aspect that just it looked a little bit too much. It look, he looked a little bit too gassed for me. He looked a little bit too celebratory. It's like you're in a battle. You want your keeper to look like they're in a real rugged battle to win the FA Cup. Did Aaron Ramsdale look like he wanted to win the FA Cup? He looked more interested in trying to win his spot back. And that is not, that's not relevant to me. That's just not relevant to me. If, I was, if I'm an Arsenal fan, there's just something frustrating about that. So there's this emotional quality to Arsenal that once the chips are down for Arsenal, they're really, really down. Like a degenerate gambler uh, wobbling out of William Hill at 11pm. He's been there all day. Uh that, that's what I think. That's what I think they are. I think they're. I think. I think they. They struggle with their emotions. They're volatile. They're like a. They're like a teenage adolescent who's failed their GCSEs. Seriously, they're. They're so. They're emotional. They don't know where they're going with their life. You want a manager, and that stems from the manager. I'm sorry. You want a manager that's calm, collected, gives them a bollocking, and says, "Next game, we go out and win that as well." And it's hard to see where Arsenal are going to win their next game of football because they have to get back to it. They got big games in the Champions League against Porto, which are very, very winnable. They were fantastic in the Champions League, and actually in the Champions League, I'd have to say that they they had a bad result against uh, Lons, of course. But apart from that, they kind of were very, very mechanical, robotic. They got through the. the the group very very quickly very easily uh, as well where where is that in the FA Cup where is that in the Premier League it's just falling apart so uh, Arsenal are in a complete meltdown situation um, and I'd love to get your opinions on where they go from here uh, if you like this setup as well let me know uh, it's obviously against a brick wall which is different for me yeah it's radic radically different uh, and if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe would really appreciate it uh, we'll be do, doing tons of content this week. Thank God the Premier League's back. Uh, the FA Cup's a beautiful little break, but we need some real big boy football to come back. If you're new to the channel, again, uh, make sure you subscribe. I'll see you very, very soon.